Hello and welcome to the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Sama Morningstar and I have Practitioner Michelle here with me. Thank you so much, Practitioner Michelle, for joining us today. It is an honor and a blessing to have your presence and to um, hear your stories uh, today. So I would love for you to introduce yourself more and share about, I know we were talking about um, farming and mm -hmm. an ancestral healing womb and womb yes. health and how all of this weaves together. This has been a topic of, of greater and greater passion for me. So I'm so glad that you're coming on here to share with us about it. So please introduce yourself and, and share with us. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for having me. Much gratitude for um, having a platform and allowing us to um, to have this conversation and get the word out. So mm -hmm. um, just so everyone knows, I'm Practitioner Michelle, and a lot of times I get the, like you asked earlier, practitioner of what? Um, I'm a sacred woman practitioner, mentor, and I also am a holistic lifestyle coach, and I specialize um, as a womb, breast, and heart care um, practitioner. And that's through... Um, Queen of Fua, but I've also a certified comedic yoga instructor um, and I'm an herbalist, and hence the farm and the farming and getting into the land, um, as well as a Reiki master. So this is kind of all flowing together as a holistic life, a lifestyle coach. Um, and I think right now it is very, uh, very important, very poignant with everything going on in the world with, um, you know, we, we have the pandemic, but we also have a lot of the injustices and things happening now in the world that people are fighting for. And a lot of those things take a toll on the soul. Um, so I do cater to um, helping people to kind of um, refill their cup. You know, we do a lot of work, uh, particularly as women, and we pour out a lot. And, you know, one of my favorite sayings is always, you can't pour for it from an empty cup. So I'm, I'm here to help women learn how to fill their own cup with what they need um, in, in their own worlds. Um, so yeah, that's who I am. And just to, what I wanted to come and talk about today through our conversation, I think I, re I remember I was posting our article and we we're talking about um, working um, through womb health and working with and working with the land and our ancestral land and our ancestors um, and our spiritual guides and how that kind of plays into the farming and, and, and whatnot. And I actually teach a class, it's called uh, Mystical Gardening. Mm -hmm. And it talks about um, not just, it, it does have some of the teaching where, you know, okay, here's the seed, we put this in the ground, this is going to grow, you know, this is the kind of dirt you need to use, this is what we, you know, for soil. But it also has this aspect of it is that, um, we fertilize and we grow the soil and connect it to the land the same way we grow our in in, in um, fertilize ourselves um, spiritually um, and working as we work through um, you know with the farming and when it's time to plant and when it's time to do certain things we don't realize a lot of times that's tied cosmically to where the moon is and and so when you start pulling all these pieces together and you realize okay where well, our cycles flow with the moon you know whether you are in your fertile moon cycle or whether you're in your um your spiritual your your spiritual mother's moon cycle your your wise woman moon cycle um it, it still, when we are in good health, it does flow with the moon and so does the land and, and the elements and has we tied all those things together. So that's really kind of what I try to incorporate because we have a lot of people out here um, talking about, you know, good health and what to eat and, and whatnot. And one of the things that I found in my journey, and that's how I got into my journey, was that I was having moon issues. Um, and in that journey of, you know, one of the things I didn't understand was like, oh, well, I've been plant-based and all the things they say, you know, I'm healthy. Why do I still have fibroids? Um, and then that's about the time that I found Queen Afua and started to realize there, there's this spiritual connection between our wounds and ourselves and our mind. And when we're trapped in this sense of, I don't know, the matrix or... Um, 
not fulfilling or being our authentic selves and not fulfilling that. Um, and so that's where this journey began. And as I continued to grow in that journey in helping women, I, there was this calling that says, it's time for you to come home. And I kept saying, no, no, I'm not ready to go back to Texas yet. No, <laughs> I'm staying in California. I want to be free and, and, and these things. And they're like, no, no, it's time to come home. And, you know, they put a situation, my guides put a situation in my life to say, okay, no, you really do have to come home. Um, nothing bad. It was a relationship, but it dissipated as soon as I got here. It was like, they were saying like, you will not listen for any other reason. We'll find, we'll find something to make you, you know, to inspire you to come home and coming home, um, tapping into that and getting here in the land. You know, I come from a farming family, you know, we traveled quite a bit and now everyone's starting to retire and come home. Um, but this land has been in our family. Um, or at least my parents have, uh, they purchased this land about 25 years ago. Um, and the story is that it was in our family prior. Um, and you know, it's so funny, like today they, they have all these stories about, oh, you know, who's the, the, you know, the, what is that when like the, the results say you're the father, you're not the father, those type of things. And they make it like, it's so new. And I was like, those things have always been going on. It's just that we didn't have DNA back in the day. Um, and my grandfather's father, um, in he was told that that was not his father he, or someone else was his father, but his half brother, his older brother, that was definitely his father. And they all looked alike. And we were under the uh, suspicion that they were really full brothers, but you know, his mom had was like, I'm done with you. Because if you go to that side of the family, when you start doing the genealogy, it dead ends. So we're like, mm. um, and even my grandfather's half nephew is um organic farmer as well and a mentor to mine he's he's older so he's you know with COVID, he's you know um isolated right now but they look just alike every time i see him i see my grandfather you know and they were really close so it just kind of feels good because i remember when we would come home and people would be like oh that's great we're so glad that the land is back in the family now um you know it it's just a sense of when I go out and I work in this land is just this sense of calm and protection. And like, there have been generations of people coming here to kind of hold me and, and give me knowledge that, you know, because I had had an opportunity to get up and travel and, and do all these things. And I don't know if I was paying that much attention to farming, but when I came back, the knowledge came with the land, if that makes sense. The, the mm -hmm. knowledge came from within, like they were watching over me and protecting me. So, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I've had experiences of connection with the land that were very much related to the womb and to my practices mm -hmm. around menstruation and giving blood back to the earth and i would love to hear any stories like that that you can share of reconnecting from a from the womb space to the ancestry yes. of the land and receiving guidance and information that way yeah so now as far as the the womb work a lot of what we do with queen of fua um we are working with the elements and one of the things that we do say um we're asking our spirit guides to um teach us to be in tune with the universe teach us how to heal with the inner and outer elements of earth fire water and earth um and one of the things when you are working with the land you are there um directly related to the elements um, and keeping those elements in in balance um, tapping into that boom fire element tapping into that water emotion element um, being out there in the land touching the earth being able to um, I find I find actually great joy because it, it one of the when we're looking at womb and cleaning up the womb uh, one of the things that we're doing is soil remediation because at, at some point people were um, in between time, in between ownership, uh, people were dumping things like that. And, and the, you know, so you find cans and different things like that. So when I'm working with that earth element, that earth aspect and cleaning the land, um, fertilizing the soil, um, 
it, it is like a direct connection because you are out there touching within the elements. Um, now, as far as blood work, um, that is to me very private and I do do some of that, um, but that has not been done yet because we, uh, the, the land, the consecration hasn't been complete. Mm -hmm. um, so, so once that happens, you know, and like you were saying, like that spot there, there's quite a bit of acreage here, but my spot there's just a half an acre. So there is a lot of blessing that goes into the land to make it sacred before I will start those type of, of, of rituals of free bleeding and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, there is a definite um, spiritual tie because I can feel, um, I, I don't know how to describe it, but there is a definite um, spiritual connection um, there with healing in general and within the womb. Um, it's, it's about giving life. Um, I don't think as humans, we realize how much damage that we're doing and, and how connected we are. So with, with, with what's around us. So when I'm doing something for the earth, I realize that I'm doing something for myself because we are really, truly one in the same. So that, that's my connection when I'm doing, um, being out there and getting my hands dirty and you know being in the water making sure that the soil is fertile because that's what i'm doing with my own room so and that's and that goes through the food that i feed it um the food that i put in my body um you know it i do have a meditation spot out there um as well so that i can just have moments to be able to envision what the land wants me to do um, if that makes sense, you know, um, working with the land instead of saying, okay, we're going to farm, we're going to cut everything down and this is where we're going to start. I allow the land to tell me this is the vision that we have for it. Um, this is where the water already runs. So let's work with this. Let's, let's fertilize this part of the land and allow that for that to be that water element because that's where the water wants to be. So, um, that that is that there is that connection but there's a lot of work that goes into it before we'll get to that that blood consecration wow just you sharing about that because you're starting fresh with this land even though your family mm -hmm. has owned it off and on for so many years you're there fresh just in this last year Yes, just in this last year. And you're probably the first, I mean, have any of the other women in your family had this approach of spiritual connection to the land and perhaps menstrual connection to the yeah. land that you know of? Yes, I, because there, you know, you're going to have a couple generations where they're going to be a little bit more um, traditional, a little bit more Christian. Um, now, have they always, the women in my family have always farmed on some level or garden. So like my mother's a nurse. Um, and so there's still that healing aspect of it. And she's done a lot of work in camp with um, cancer patients and whatnot. Um, and she's always been a gardener. And wherever she goes, wherever she's followed my dad, she's managed to give life to food. And that's really important to um to to our lineage um you go back generation to generation um we grew a lot of our food because we had to um even um i would say i was probably in my 20s when my great grandmother's um sister passed away and she was well almost about 100 um and we would talk a lot about um not just the land as 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 women but how we had to operate in this world as as black women and what's happened over the centuries and different things like why we ate um the food that we ate and, and whatnot and how that played into our health um also we would look at things like it's just been the last couple of generations where you're having a lot of the more modern amenities and processed food and eating meat and different things like that. Um, you know, and the, with my great aunt, great, great aunt's generation, she always used to tell me, she was like, I don't understand why you're eating because we raised our meat. So we didn't have the, 
ability to go to the stores. Um, there were certain stores where they had food we weren't allowed into. Um, um, her generation, she was one of the few that was light enough to pass. So a lot of times she would go into the store to buy certain things, but she would be the only one allowed in the store. So it, it having it necessarily tied to the womb, maybe not so much, but being tied to the land, being tied to herbalism, being having this very um, powerful spiritual aura about us, that is... Um, definitely something that's been been passed down um, you know some some don't want to admit it because some there's sometimes it can be scary um, but I do remember um, when my grandmother passed and you know being still out in California knowing that I was coming home and I was like grandmother's gone and, and my when my mother told me and I said well I already know and she says well how do you know I said well she came, she came and told me that it was time for her to go. Um, and so when I look at that, that's where that, that this old soul that I have, this old connection I have to the, the women that we grew up in the country, we grew our food, we were very spiritual um, and magical in, in a way. So, so it's, it's nuanced, you know, just cause of societal pressures, but, um, there's a definite spiritual through line that's been generation after generation after generation. It sounds like uh, out of necessity, but also out of uh, keeping hold of something that belonged to your family, to, to your people, mm -hmm. something valuable, something precious. Um, yeah. Wh wherever that, uh, however that could be held on to yeah yeah and and, yeah, you're, and, and then you, reclaimed whenever that could be reclaimed oh yeah you know and i, I think that's um you, you know and i think that's the it, it really is out of necessity because you know i remember learning things from them as a child not knowing why and not understanding why until i was much older 30 40 like okay well why can't i see things why can i why do i have this ability to you know read energy and different things like that because these are things that were happening they just called it different things out of necessity to fit in with society at that particular time or really just hide it with within the family um, but I do remember growing up and, you know, you would hear comments. Uh, I remember my grandmother making plant medicines and I, I was a little kid and I thought it was like, you remember when back in the eighties they had sea monkeys, mm -hmm. <laughs> the little yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. And she had this big jar of, and it was um, camphor and the oil was growing and she had little things like that all around. And I just thought it was a little world of people. And I, I always ask her, well, why are those people in there? She, what are you talking about? <laughs> but that was her way of teaching me how to make plant medicines. You know, we would play in the country and, and you'd be like, okay, you would know to what to forage. And you would, we would spend the whole day outside eating, um, finding wild plums and blackberries and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, we called them bull nettles and things like that, stinging nettles. But, you know, people use nettles now in plant medicine, particularly for, you know, women with the, you know, wound issues and the vitamin K. But these are things that we do, would just go um, pick out of the yard, you know, and learning that, you know, looking at um, um, dandelions and different things like that. We had stuff like that, you know, we, we just, I think it's, we're just now recognizing the value of all of that, making some of the old things new. Um, and, um, you know, I remember my grandmother just instinctively doing things. I remember I had an asthma attack at one point and she gave me castor oil. And my mom, you know, she was a nurse. She's like, why'd you give her castor oil? Well, as as an adult, I really, you know, knowing going into plant medicine and studying herbal remedies, castor oil does actually help with asthma, you know, but those are that, those are those things that, that old world knowledge that, you know, 
um, that just gets passed down from generation to generation. And now we're getting the science behind it to understand why certain things work the way they do. So, right. And now you probably have to go get some kind of a certification to prove yes. that you know what you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but you know, that's, you know, that's part of the journey. Um, and you know, and I'm okay with that because this is knowledge that should not be lost, you know, um, you know, and there, there are many things that, that, you know, plant knowledge that we did do out of necessity, like as far as, you know, when we wanted to abort children, or if we wanted to ensure that we had that child, you know, there were things that we could take back then, um, because there was a lot of uh, rape and abuse, and sometimes they didn't want to bring children into that situation. And there were things that you could do. Um, but there are also the, the sad side of it that, you know, people kind of caught on and they would give them another remedy to make sure that whatever they took didn't work for um, aborting the child. Um, and it was often forced. So these are the type of things that get passed down generation to generation, but then it starts to get we start to lose, lose that knowledge, um, you know, just because now we're more modern or, oh no, we can do Western medicine, da, 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 da. And not that I have anything against Western medicine, but I know that particularly for womb, women in their wounds, um, that old knowledge is so important to keep us in balance. We weren't meant to work 50, 60 hours a week and have our hormones out of balance and, um, I don't know, do 50 things at once as, as we do. Um, and that to, for me, farming um, and tying that spiritual um, balance into the land kind of releases a lot of that, that stress, that throwing your body into this high cortisol zone um, that creates a lot of problems that we do have in our wounds and in our bodies and inflammation in, in general, you know, so. So it sounds like you, you feel like just having cultivating that relationship with the land growing plants in the garden or in a farm just that act helps regulate that cortisol imbalance oh yeah oh i think it definitely helps it's 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 such a, a calming a peaceful way it's a simple way to live you know and i know um, for me, my I actually have a law degree and have worked in corporate America for years. It's such a s more simple way to live. Um, there is a sense of joy that I didn't have before. And I still technically work. I still have a day job. It's just right now, you know, work remotely. Um, but to be able to sit in the garden and say, okay, I grew this food. I know it's good, healthy food. It's nutrient dense because we've... Um, taking good care and we love the soil and we've put our energy and our love into the soil and that's been transferred into the food it once you taste it it tastes different it feels like you're getting nutrients it's just a sense of of peace and calm instead of like oh we're running here we're running there we got to get this done technology is happening oh technology is going out you just don't get that um when you're working the land and you're tied to it spiritually because you move with the elements, the moon, the water, the earth, the air, the sun. You don't move ahead of them. You move when it's time. So you can be as stressed as you want, but if it's not time to plant the peas, it's not time to plant the peas, you know? And you don't sow, you don't harvest the same day you sow the seed, you know? So it, it does teach you this sense of, flowing with the pace of the earth. It really ties you into um, this elemental knowledge of being able to um, pull that. And I'm not saying that there are some of us that aren't gifted to manipulate some of the elements. There are, but it, the elements, you know, Mother Nature is far stronger than we are. And it's, it's much better to flow within her and work with the land um, than work against it. Well, and then, you know, and then there, go ahead. Oh, oh, and that's it. And then, you know, you also have that the, for me, the, the more 
the modern concepts of when you're you're pushing you see people pushing to have the land willed to them is when you have you know modern farming monocrop culture and so outside of even that spirituality you having depleted soil so this is even the science side of it like you're depleting the soil we have we're destroying destroying crop diversity when we try to control the land you know and that's from science ag science and, and whatnot and and you see like you have all these fields in the midwest that are like dry you see everyone all of a sudden there was a big boom for kale and then you realize that 90 percent of the kale on the market is is depleted because the soil it's grown in is depleted and it's using it over and over and over and over um so it, to me i feel like both sides are tied and that's when we're getting this balance because we're starting to look at it is healthier physically it's healthier emotionally and it's healthier um, phys and spiritually to be able to be tied to the land, be a part of that rhythm. That's, this, is, this is our heritage. We came from agricultural, you know, nomadic type cultures, like where we really were dependent on the land and not making the land dependent on us, you know, not destroying it. So Well, I like to describe what you're talking about by saying uh, that we have a partnership, a harmonious partnership with the land. Mm -hmm. We can have that where we're in a, a healthy relationship, uh, recognizing the land as, as a family member or a loved one, that Absolutely. we want to nurture that being just as much as we want to receive nourish nourishment from that being. And mm -hmm. so having a, a partnership instead of like in, in the modern agricultural system that's more of a domination or an ownership yeah. or you know that kind of a thing um where then the land is depleted and discarded like something disposable <laughs> right yeah. um, and yeah. and that that whole shift in consciousness back towards mutually nourishing partnership between people mm -hmm between humanity and Mother Earth, um, all of that, I feel, is central to womb healing and arising oh, yeah. out of womb healing. I love, I'd love to hear you talk about that shift. Uh, I don't know if that feels like a shift for you or coming home or what that feels like to you. Well, I mean, I, I definitely feel it, it is a shift. Um, for me, I really feel my journey has started um, back in 2012, um, where a lot of things had shifted for me completely internally. And that's, um, and it was more or less to shift back. I was like this as a, yet as a younger age. And, you know, as I approached 40, it was like something's something's off, you know, something's different. And that's when that journey really began for me back in 2012. Um, now, 2020, even with everything going on, I feel like this really is a coming home. It's, um, it's a very peaceful shift, but I know in that outside world, it's still a lot of chaos and energetic because as other people start to experience the shift that you know people you know things come in waves people come in waves people awaken in waves um and th i feel like this is a i feel like this is a little bit harsher um than what i experience what i see people going through now um a little bit harsher than what happened you know eight years ago for me um but it was also about when you're going through that shift, it's not so much that I was, um, and this may be why you feel a lot of the chaos and give and take is that people are fighting it. I just went with the flow. And while I was happening, it wasn't like, Oh, things shifted. Now I am, now I'm spiritual, you know, and you, you will have people do that. And I was like, that's not how it works. There's still a lot of work to do. There's a lot of forgiveness that I need to give for myself for. Um, there was a lot of inner child work that I had to do. There was a lot of 
uh, meditation um, and centering of myself to not only heal myself in the physical, that, that wound um, from that fibroid, which, which it did, it exited my body, but also just to bring my heart in balance, to, to realize that everyone's not going to experience this, this energy shift the same way I am and to be a vessel and be open and be compassionate. Um, I never want to come across as I know something you don't and you need to come to me um, to find out about it. You know, it's about really sharing because this new shift is going to happen regardless of whether I'm on board or not, or whether the next person is on board or not. Um, you can fight it if you want to, but it is, will be to your detriment to fight this, this, this energy that's happening right now. Um, so, you know, I, I really just try to stay open and be a vessel um, but I do realize that within this last, this last pool, this last um, movement that we're going through, a lot more people are, are, are far more open. A lot more people are coming to me with questions. Um, I'm so excited to see more people interested in not just necessarily farming, but every urban garden, you know, still get your hands in the soil. If all you have is a balcony, I still advocate for that, that you still can find that spiritual tie touching that soil and having your little mini compost and all those, all those things. Um, and just being able to have some control over the, what you're putting into your body. Um, but I, I am excited. I know that this is just the beginning and there's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of um, work for me to do. I feel in some, in some sense, it's, you know, when people do come to me and I'm able to give them knowledge, sometimes I feel like, okay, I don't, I'm not even sure where that came from. That came from this, this other connection that says, okay, this is what needs to flow through you. But in that sense, I also know that I still myself need to do a lot of work, you know, um, at 45, I feel like I'm a baby still, you know, um, someone made the comment about moving generation X moving into being elders and it's like, what? <laughs> no, no, we're not ready. What are you talking about? I'm not ready. I'm still a baby. Um, but I do know that I've probably been in the game a little bit longer than some, but I look at it more like, um, you know, let me walk with you. Let me share. I don't feel like I'm necessarily teaching, but it's let me share with you what I know and you share with the next person. And, and um, you know, that's, that's really been my experience through, through, this, um, through this last shift. Um, and I feel too that I'm probably a little bit much, much more open as, you know, open to allowing spirit to guide me. And they, they have said, okay, like you've been doing this work and that's great, but let's take a step back and focus on not necessarily building this compound, but building this manifesting that vision that you've been having so that other people can see. So it's not so much that I'm teaching someone or I'm telling someone to, what to do. You can just see it in my life. I'll just show you how I live. If you want to jump on the bandwagon, great. But it's not me to tell someone that we're going through the shift and this is what you have to do. This is what you need to do. No, this is how I'm experiencing my journey and how I'm showing up authentically. And I'm creating that, that sacred ground that I want to see, that I want to live in and showing it and sharing it with, with others. Well, so. you just really um, described what that title of practitioner seems to mean. At least when you described that, I was like, oh, that's why you're a practitioner. You're not teacher Michelle or guru Michelle, right? You're a practitioner who's putting these, um, these principles, these ideas, these inspirations, this guidance from the ancestors, from the land directly into mm -hmm. practice yeah. and practicing yeah. it and letting it change you, heal you, evolve you. And then there's a, there's a direct transmission when someone can come and see you and experience you living yeah. and practicing that way. Yeah. 
that then yeah. that's inspiring to me and anyone who hears you talk about it or comes and visits you or you know comes to one of your programs or something like that so I love that what you shared about that different approach and that's the partnership approach to healing mm -hmm. really because that other approach that you talked about of being the one who's teaching someone something that they don't know well you might share information yeah. as a partner but you're not insisting that they do the thing right <laughs> yeah and as a partner yeah. we can share that information they do it. and they do it out of their own inspiration or or even that there's one way to do things you know yeah. um you, you you get a lot of that you know where it's like this is the only way you know or and to me that that's where a lot of the division comes in um it's very akin to what you see in religiosity it's this is the only way to do it and that's that's not the the case you know that's there are many ways to heal um this is just one of them um but this is what i connect to being a um someone that's really connected to the earth and in the elements you know and and different things like that this is how i manifest that um simple living and healthy living you know um and you know womb health you know and and i think a lot of times you know when we when we say womb health yes we have our physical womb but we also have our spiritual womb where we're there creating and that's what this op this this life has given me the opportunity to do to be able to actually see that land and turn around and manifest at an auction the perfect piece of wood that i wanted for this gate or, or whatever those things like that um knowing that okay this is going to protect you know the lamb from this or you know the deer from over here because then they won't hurt themselves these type of things like it, things start to flow in, in in such a different way that it's not so you have to do it this way or you you know there's some guidance like you know maybe not grow things in in plastic but if you have to these are your options to do so so i think um just even with uh, the farm all of that just just about being in balance and being being keeping that bridge that heart that heart open and allowing um whatever knowledge flows down from the crown allowing out the cross and then it just really kind of just flows down through my earthly chakras and just right into the ground and and i love just kind of rooting down just in the earth with my feet and you know earthing and all of that um it it's it's just a different type of piece and it doesn't come with the i guess the pressure to be a certain way to sound a certain way to look a certain way um you know to be in you know some spiritual group and then it becomes you know sorority like or clickish and all those things and to me that's when you are on that spiritual journey um but you're on it out of balance if that makes sense that being in balance makes it uh true it makes it authentic um you know there are times where you know i'll post things on social media and they'll be cute and there's some times where i'm like Ooh. <laughs> whatever the message is there <laughs> it's there <laughs> you know so um i think it's just for me it's just an important way that to say that um or to share with people that you can be your you can create your own joy and and live authentically however that looks you know um people will say well you know you were in corporate america and yeah i am but i still have wanted to manifest this life and live the simple life and that's what that's what i'm doing even with you know it's it's i don't know it's it's it, it's balance that's the only way it's my art that's how i see it um and to me balance that you know, all of that is so much goes into you know your overall health but particularly as women your womb health 
um, your womb, the physical womb, yes, we birth children, but that spiritual womb, that's our sacred seat. That's where our creativeness comes from. That's where we birth ideas. That's where we birth love, all those things. And to keep those in balance to me is, is, is what healthy means. Beautiful. And when I, when I hear you talk about this process of feeling the wisdom coming down, the, the insight down through your body and straight into the earth and the practice of earthing, and then contrast that with the idea of being in some kind of spiritual group that's not connected to the land in that way and, and the imbalance that's intrinsic in that. This, it seems like just walking barefoot on the earth is a, is a way to come back into balance from all of that. You know, so many spiritual groups, there's this ascension based idea or this transcendent based idea or this dissociative or even bypassing yeah. of going to the spirit realms. And, and, you know, a lot of people, that's what we learn in response to trauma is to get out of here spiritually. And a lot of spiritual practitioners yeah have really good skills at getting out of here because of trauma but getting out of here doesn't mean yeah. we healed the trauma right the trauma is still there running around in our bodies yeah making problems and hurting other people <laughs> right and so this yeah getting yeah. into the body and getting back to feet on the ground and feeling those natural yeah. rhythms seems like a, a such a grounded way and in my experience is and I hear you talking about that and so I'm curious if you have any other reflections on on those things that I just shared well yeah and I would just say even with the balance it it particularly when you're talking about the the spiritual bypassing I mean you do see that a lot and I always feel that regardless of how you believe or whatever it is specifically that you believe if we are here for elevation, it is to elevate as humanity, not as specific individuals. So that means that when we get all in, whatever you wanna call it, enlightened, you know, off, on, off the planet or whatever it, it may be, we have to understand that we chose this journey out of compassion for humanity. And so that grounding, that earth brings you back because that gives you your humanity. That helps you get in touch with your humanity. Because I, I spiritually, you don't, I don't understand the benefit of being above and beyond people. Then, you know, I, I'm here for spiritual service, not just to be, you know, um, bypassing issues and, um, you know, or operating out of ego to where like, I'm so spiritual, I don't have time for humanly things because human things happen. Um, and they're, this world hurting. And so, yes, it's, it's beautiful to be able to, you know, leave, but you do have to come, like you said, come back and heal your own hurts. Um, you maybe take another little break, but you have to come back and be able to share, share that healing because that's what's, that's how we're all going to progress together. You know, if, if I'm, if I have this and I'm like, oh, I've built my little area. I have a compound. I don't care what's going on outside of that. Well, who's that? That's not helping the earth. Because if my neighbors are over here dumping oil on the ground, guess what? That's going to contaminate the whole area. You know, when we look at how air, we look at the wind. If we we become, say we become so spiritual and we're just all, all I'm worried about is Texas. But someone has chemicals or whatever in this, this dust, that Saharan dust that's flying around or over here now. Well, that still affects us. You know, um, even as spiritual people, because we're still, regardless of whether we're operating our mentally or spiritually in 5D, our bodies are still here in the 3D. Our families are still here in the 3D. Other people, humans are here in the 3D. Animals, the earth are here in the 3D. So we need to be able to make that connection that we do have to go back and forth. 
or live in both at the same time. So um, for me, that's kind of what that grounding grounding is for. It always reminds me to step out of ego um, and be open and allow people to experience um, and, and even to show people this is a way you can heal. You can do this for yourself um, because I've done it. You know, I've been a um, sexual trauma survivor. That was one of the things that really helped me um, was the meditation and the grounding. Being able to um, catch my breath. Now, yes, there was work after that, inner child work and all these things like that. And, and um, you know, uh, additional emotional work, um, journaling and all these things. But that was that first connection is catching my breath by coming back into balance. You know, a lot of times we're running around where we don't have our breath. We're here and then you have some people, they're breathing deep and they're way off here and they're like no connection here. We need to bring that back. We need to bring that back to earth to be like, okay, now I can breathe. I can heal. Let me show you how to breathe so you know how to heal. You can find your own path to healing. So, yeah. Yeah, somebody showing me how to breathe was one of the biggest first steps in my healing journey too. So thank you for reiterating, reiterating that and bringing that to our listeners' awareness. And um, <laughs> yeah. our time has flown on by. I would love for you to share if anyone wants oh, wow. to get in touch with you and, um, and learn more about your work and what you're up to. Um, can you share where, where folks can, can find you online? Oh, oh, yes. So my website is www.soulfullyhealthyliving.com. And you can find me on IG and Facebook also under um, Soulfully Healthy Living. Um, so if you just Google Soulfully Healthy Living, you'll, you'll find me somewhere on the net. Um, and I'm pretty accessible and I answer uh, questions quite readily. Um, so just definitely reach out. I'm here to share what I have. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been such a blessing to have you with us on the podcast. And listeners know this is the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Womb Centered Healing Temple offerings, you can go to wombcenteredhealing.com. So thanks again for joining us. And may we all be uh, receptive and open to this transition, these changes, and reconnecting mm -hmm. with Mother Earth with our sacred mother earth um so thank you thank you thank you for having me all right take care